here for Commission Horror Stories, Tales from Fire City. Welcome! I'm so happy to have everybody here. How's the comment for y'all? So by the name of this by the name of this panel, you're probably wondering what is this gonna be about? So uh, my name is Amber Rosani. I am a dealer here on Research Wanted to be with I've been doing art for about six years now. This panel is gonna be me sharing the many stories I have with working as a freelance artist in the fan. Trust me. So <laughs>
is such a mission, and that is not fun. <laughs> um, for the artists out there, I want to ask you, what is your biggest fear when it comes to working with a client? Three in the back. Black hand pause. when you block them. <laughs> you don't even need to talk to them anymore. If, if they even make any requests like that, block them and move on. That is literally all you can do in that case. You don't need to continue the conversation. You don't need to argue that it's illegal. If you know it's illegal, don't even bother. Just block it and move on. <laughs> also, um, when it comes to um, working with clients, it's also very useful to have like a do's and don'ts, basically in your terms of service, things like, hey, here's what I will draw, here's what I won't draw. If you ask me for something that I won't draw, of course the answer is I'm not gonna draw it. So always have that indicated in there, but I seriously doubt you will have to constantly keep going at it because there's a lot of people that know that that stuff is wrong, but they surprisingly will still try to do it. So I am sorry that you have that fear, but I don't think we'll have that much of an issue with it because you just gotta block and move on. Does anyone else have a fear when it comes to uh, working with clients? Anyone in the room? Raise a hand. Thank you. I'm sorry? Oh, so like we do it constantly? Okay, so redoing the commission over and over again is something that a lot of artists can be really frustrated over. Here is your excuse to that. You can charge people for having to redraw the piece like several times, especially if it's like a sketch, because you're having to spend more and more time on it. I've had people tell me that in the past, but this works for literally like anybody. This could be your choice. You don't have to do this. But if you have people that are constantly like telling you to change the pose and change the entire commission, like especially like in the sketch, or even beyond it, you are absolutely going to like to charge them. Like charge, charge more fees for that. Because you, your time is money, and you always have to value and rate yourself based on how much time you put into your commission. So always be on top of that. Even if they pull that kind of card on you when it's like, oh, I don't like the way you did this with the commission, you don't want it all finished and everything. And they still even have the, the audacity to be like, hey, like, you gotta change it for me. I don't think yeah, that's when you're gonna probably have some problems with them, but I'm sure um, I'm sure you will find a way to get that figured out. Just including in your terms of service, and I think you'll be good. For you, in the back. Yeah, so I'm not an artist, but I'm a writer. I was very deterred from taking commission. Um, I'm an SFW all, uh, writer. Uh, because a lot of the requests I got before it opened up for commission were a lot of things that have been done millions of times before. There were some of those kids oh, I'm just getting close to you, sorry, I'm back here. Okay, yeah, okay. so uh, I'm a writer. Uh, I used to be, um, uh, I used to take the group, or I used to get a lot of requests before I opened up for commission. Um, and all the requests I got were all ideas that have just been overdone, over and over, and just kind of like, literally anywhere, they will throw, yeah, so I didn't want to take any commissions after that. I was like, uh, oh, I think I'm done. Feel like repetitiveness, that was really like a big offset for you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you don't, if you're tired of like doing the same thing over and over again, you have every every right to deny people like to have them keep doing that. You don't even have to provide reason if you just don't feel comfortable doing that stuff. You can always just say, hey, sorry, not really feeling comfortable doing this right now. If you have maybe another idea, I can absolutely work with you on that. And if they say, like, no, I, I wanted this idea, but I appreciate your time anyway, then, you know, all's fair, it's all good, just go on about with your day. You will definitely find clients that will want to do something more unique, more exotic, and something that will really bring you a challenge. And I think taking on more challenging work is how you're going to improve as an artist and as a writer. Yeah. So I highly would encourage that, if someone comes to you with an idea like that. Anybody else in the room that has, like, a fear? You. I, I, I
Okay, so I get that. That's totally understandable. In those cases, I would encourage commissions as being so comfortable doing so. Try to get into a pattern, get into a rhythm. And setting, setting up like a schedule for yourself and when you like do work and like you study it out of time, taking breaks in between will really help with like trying to build up that schedule and really build up that consistency. Especially for those that um, have like ADHD, for example, building a schedule is really good for you. I found that out from a lot of artists that also have ADHD. Having to build your like whole like body onto that schedule and just following that schedule consistently really helps with being able to push all your art out into like a tiny manner. So you don't have to always like keep like being stressed out over having to be delayed with all that stuff. So I do understand that stress. I would love that in the beginning, but once I got into my product, I started feeling a lot more comfortable with that kind of So just, just be comfortable with what you are okay with, and you'll be good to go. Will you have your hand up? All right, so what about you? Um, Like they cannot work off of the research, that's just not going to work. 
That's a whole different medium that they're working with. You can't just give them a description and expect them to know what to do. You have to actually give them like a visualization. So, as an artist, if you feel more comfortable working with an actual reference sheet, you can put into your TOS that you will only accept commissions with actual valid reference sheets. Don't shade your reference sheet. Please. Please don't shade your reference sheet. That is another thing that a lot of people would nitpick on. You probably have seen this go around on Twitter or on, like, on any other social media, but there has been a lot of like debate over shading reference sheets. Like A lot of people are saying, because I want it to look good. I really like the way that it looks on the ref sheet. But the reality is that they need to color paint everything on it. And sometimes reference sheets don't have color tops on them. I don't know why, but it's very useful to have the color top on there. So if you have a ref sheet that's shaded with no color palette, you're not going to get accurate color. That's why a lot of artists don't like shaded ref sheets. So a clear, flat ref sheet will be the best ticket for having a very accurate, colored, finished art piece. So I would hope that helps. <laughs> Anybody else? Anyone? Someone have a hand back, three back there? You. Is the uh, shiny silky one? All right, what she got? Oh, yeah. I can understand that completely. 
completely, especially if you're like a solely not safer work artist. That could be a very, very dangerous zone to deal with because I have had people complain on Twitter that there is a minor that pretended to be 18 just to get commissions, or even the other way around, like someone that pretended to be an adult and they were actually a minor and doing not safer work art. So very, very scary to think about, and I totally like understand where you can come from from that, but like the reality is not many people are gonna know. They're not gonna know that because they're, they can hide it super well and not even indicate that. And the only way you're ever gonna find out that someone is faking their age is if someone comes forward and says, hey, this person is faking their age. Especially if you see the inconsistencies in them recording their age. Like, a big red flag could be someone saying, oh, I'm 24 on like Twitter. Then you check on their Instagram, they're actually 20. That's a big red flag right there. Because then it's just like, are you 24 or are you 20? Or are you just lying and you're actually in line? So that could be another thing that you could look out for, inconsistencies with their social media. Because then it's just like, <laughs> not trusting that. <laughs> so, funny story. I was given a commission where someone wanted to have a whole custom character with like a all pack, a target sticker pack of like 20, 25 stickers, a full blown 3D rep sheet and everything. And I quoted them like $400 for the whole thing. And they were just like, yeah, sounds good. We're gonna be on top of it. So I asked him, I just need a body reference. He sent me his nude. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Never in my life would I ever, ever have gotten something like that. And I don't think, <laughs> I don't think a lot of people in here would ever have that experience. But my god, that was a very interesting day. But I managed to get that whole thing off my back and just be like, yeah, I'm not gonna take your commission, I'm sorry. <laughs> so if someone does that, I don't understand why. <laughs> I even have to put in my terms of service, like please don't send me your nudes when I ask for a body reference. <laughs> because it's just that one incident. Because um, I draw like, uh, I draw fat furs and stuff. So I understand if like people have to send me references for like the body pads of their character. But like, I always have to tell them like, please don't send me news, please don't send me news. Please don't send me news. I don't want to see them. <laughs> and a lot of them just get so confused. just like, what are you talking about? But like, I can't even like just fathom how that even happened. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just, it's just a whole fun uh, ball game of that. So um, now I want to actually get some insight from other people that might have some horror stories. So who has a story of their own to share? Raise your hand up and wide. You in the black hall. Let me get it to the mic for the spotlight, if that's okay. You want the mic? Months, 
with something like 18 different accounts. It was absolutely ridiculous. So he, he would literally create throwaway emails and like proton mail, sign up for Discord, try to do the commission again under a different name, and, and you could tell it was the same person because he couldn't he couldn't use grammar properly, and it was always the same exact request. It's just <laughs> ridiculous. So he didn't even try. He didn't even try. <laughs> Someone just gotta take no for an answer, and still to this day, and this was years ago, my friend still occasionally gets a message from him because apparently he just hasn't figured out that no, he wants nothing to do with the guy. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I thankfully have not had to go to, um, yeah, I never have to have gone to that um, link to have to block something like that. But I'm, I'm very impressed. Yeah, I'm sorry though. But I mean, Good on your friend and good on everybody else involved that was very proactive about keeping them out. That's yep. very responsible. So I do follow them. We wrote a great fight show for us. Absolutely. So that's really good. So, anybody else got a horror story? Like, it's a 
cream color and a pink color. It's crazy. That's the same. So they were like, can we paint on both sides? <laughs> so now she's a different hair <laughs> And then they added two lines to her design. I'm like, okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> If you have a character that you are having a commission based on an artist and they are making a mistake, you are entirely justified to point out this mistake. Do not feel bad. That is their job to get it right. And they are being, and you are paying them to get it right. It's your money. You have to treat it as such. It is not their money until they finish it. So treat it as such. And you will be fine. <laughs> I just, I'm just sitting there, I'm just like, I just bought it done. Thank you. 
church transformation needs. And I very promise you, this is the problem. So you need some help. Um, I don't know if I can really say it was a commission for a story, but about three months ago, I had surgery for cancer. I had taken on emergency commissions before that surgery, and somebody donated to me. It was very nice, and my friend, my best friend over here, she finished paying for my surgery. Oh, that's very sweet of you. And we made it free. I even told the guy when he sent it to me, if you're expecting artwork, I can't do it. I know I'm not going to be able to draw for three months in recovery because I had to get my colon cancer fixed and my hernia. It was a double surgery up in the night. And I told him that, and he agreed. He was like, I don't care about the art, I don't want art, I'm just whatever. Fast forward a month after I got out of the hospital, and this guy is basically like going around to my commissioners who were in my trello, asking how long they've been waiting, asking. He's been waiting two months for a drawing. He felt heartbroken that I didn't offer to draw him anything for the donation. It was a mess, and it was uncomfortable because he went to two of my customers, and he went to new customers. It was just very awkward. And I had to show screenshots of me saying he did that our interaction is basically saying, I never agreed to do art for him. I he even said he didn't want art. He was just donating so I could live, essentially. And I'm trying not to laugh. It was just messed up because he made it seem like I promised him art because he was like, treat it like an investment kind of thing. He was expecting, like, okay, here's the money. So uh, we're drawing. And basically, it was just a mess. from somebody else, another factor artist. And I'm just like, well, what do you mean? Like, I, I put my heart and soul into this. And they're just like, oh, yeah, I like it, but I don't like how you draw hippo faces. Uh, uh, Can you draw it like this other artist? So sitting there, I'm just like, you know what? I just want this commission out, just whatever. So I took their drawing, traced the face, sent it back to them, and they're like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> Hippos ever. <laughs> I am. That is funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, like, morally, we know it's not okay to try. No, it's not okay for it. <laughs> but they're the new intentions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you made it work. Props to you. <laughs> Wait, you have, you have a story? Let me come around to the back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So when you asked what's the longest you had to wait for a commission, I had my hand up last, just past the three-year mark, and that's because I commissioned a pursuit uh, when I'm, I'm 21 now. I commissioned a pursuit after I got my first job when I was 16, and I'm extremely excited for it. I got a major to get me a 
move a couple of times. They also live on the West Coast of California, which things are really expensive right now. Um, and ultimately, by the time I was 20 years old, I was like, you haven't made any progress on this too. I've been trying to be really patient. I'm going to have to have a refund. And getting the refund even was really difficult because they were having financial troubles. And they managed to get me a partial refund for the down payment which I accepted and I kind of let them go after that because a few hundred bucks over the course of four years at that point, you know, it's whatever. And I didn't, I didn't want to put them in a more difficult position than they were already in. But I guess what I'm getting at here is it, it's a really important circumstance when you have a creator who, who falls on hard times and, and they get in a difficult position where it becomes difficult to finish your commission. And so I wasn't really sure how to navigate that because, like, I don't want to be too tough on them. Like, I don't want to be the asshole who's like, "Where's my money?" Without you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, it's like you know, I, I commissioned you to to make me a product, and it's you gave me like a like a six months to a year deadline. It's been four years, so I don't know. I, I'm just curious if any of y'all have any thoughts about that and how to deal. So I would say that I understand exactly how you feel about that whole situation because no one should have to go through hard times like that. It can be very stressful. So having to go through moves, having to go through breakups, you know, the economy, like the economy just not being so great with them, I can understand completely. But at the end of the day, it's a business. You paid them to deliver you a product. And if they're not committing to that delivery, you are entitled to a refund. That is not something that they can hold on to. Even with giving you all of those like excuses, like loosely saying excuses, because they still have to commit to something that you both agreed the moment you sent them the money. So I totally like raise with you. But you have to also kind of put your foot down in those circumstances because you are paying for that product and if a lot of money is on the line, you don't want that to go away. Especially if it's them through PayPal and you have to be careful about like their uh, whole policy, like being able to use their refund because you know like a six month so like after like the six months you can't you're not even guaranteed that money back. So you gotta be very, very careful. So if you notice that they're going through a lot of hard times, that's when I would probably immediately try to shoot for a refund. And that is not just to be mean, it's just for your own security because you could you could ultimately suffer by being given empty promises, you know what I'm saying? So you want them to be okay, but you have to look out for yourself. Because so, because of all that. The reality is that it was a very important decision to make. Because I like, get if they like didn't even deliver your product, it's not even that much. Did you have something to say on this? Yes, if you make the right promissory note, is that valid? Promissory note in most cases is an agreement between two parties where the money, as they get it, it can come out of the paycheck, and it can come out of assets. It basically says you are going to get your money by this deadline, some way, somehow, as long as you write it in. Is that usually like kind of tagged on to uh, receipts? Usually given after. Yeah. A receipt can kind of be a type of promissory note. Yeah, a receipt could absolutely be. why a lot of those places have those things, because they just want a valid proof of purchase. That's basically what he's basically saying, proof of purchase. So, you, one more story. I'll probably have time for one more story, and then I want to move on to advice that people have want to deliver. So this isn't much of a commercial story, as it is an important learning experience. Before I was engaged with this lovely girl here, she was just a friend, and I wanted to do an art piece for her. Back in the day, I used to do pixel art, and I loved it. So I attempted a pixel art piece, and I worked almost eight hours on it. 
think we're doing it in in browser version. Yeah, I know. Refresh the page. And there went all the way that was a work. So an important learning experience to say the least. <laughs> yeah, I sorry, but yeah, definitely not the I'm fortunate enough to have been able to be in a day and age where I've been able to pick up on this advice before I even started. So I'm so sorry you had to go through that. So we got time for one more story, and then I can use it. What she got? Yeah, well, this is me for a friend of mine. He listened off to us, and I think of it. When he got the sheet, it felt bad, and he found out that uh, this is cat peed on, on that paper, oh. and, he, and it smelled the artificial stress. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's kind of So is the cat peed on this commission? No, not on the commission itself. Oh. On that small pile of paper. Oh. He didn't realize it. The block button is your friend. Use it if you need to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right. Back here. Thing I found uh, incredibly beneficial is respecting the closest friend, TOS. Your business relationship with that person and your personal relationship with that person are two different things. They should be treated as such. Somebody I've known for many years and I know personally, I read their TOS and I don't expect them to do anything beyond their TOS. I don't expect where you are. I don't expect anything of that sort. Um, and I feel like that should be like known without saying, but I've I, I had our friends get sticky situations where their friends think they special privileges outside of the TOS that they've known them and nah. no. Business, personal, two different things. Alrighty, now for you. I thought for a second you were gonna be scared to hand the mic to me. I'm sorry. Uh, my, if anyone ends up selling their soul to doing any kind of NSFW work, make sure you have a good therapist on hand. <laughs> <laughs> you ever just get that one commission and afterwards be like <laughs> I might not need a punishment, but I'll have it. 
please, document every interaction possible for proof that you paid for something. It is very beneficial. And very true. Who else? Very good. I would say have as many references as possible. And another part, I think, um, sometimes, like, when looking for references, what I struggle with is, like, is it going to be, like, like something that someone would, like, to, you know, get the idea? So I'd recommend, if you can, if it's an IRL picture, trace your reference and, like, you know, clean up the sketch and then send it if you can. And that's when you have to be, like, a, artist to get the, the reference but like send and that also stops IRL <laughs> pictures yeah. being sent <laughs> but um yeah so basically have as many references as possible yeah it's very very useful information as many references as possible no me please <laughs> <laughs> I believe you tried to read yeah all right let me get to you quick Well, one uh, technical bit of advice, don't flatten the damn picture. You will uh, in in inevitably flatten the picture, oh, it's nice and lovely, and then they say, oh, I want that to be the polka dot, not the checkerboard. And uh, then you're stuck. Yeah, the only reason to flatten something is to save the file size. And nowadays, memory is cheap. Yeah. You can get yourself a two terabyte drive of all oil for 65 bucks. Don't flatten. Now, the second one, politeness by faith. I get a lot of you know, emails out of the blue saying, oh, do you take requests? That, incidentally, is one of the, the four most uh, dreaded words for artists. <laughs> and my reply is always, uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, my rates are such and such an hour. Can I help you with something? This usually gets dead silence from the other end, and you know they're not going to bother you again. But every once in a while, those result in a new client. So that's why I've got. Very useful. Okay. Uh, can you uh, no. Huh? It's okay to say no. Um, from when I was like, literally, it's okay to say no. Um, be you are a commissioner or you are the commissioning. Um, if, if something's not right, you, you're just not liking it, it's okay to say no. I know that it's a struggle out here. We all want to either make money or we have money to spend. If we really want to spend it on someone and we want to support someone, it's okay to say no. Keep your money if you want to. Don't take money from people that aren't going to treat you right. It's okay to say no. Digital artist, check your layer. Make sure you don't have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that reminder. <laughs>
Is that first part? Is that volume two? So let's say let's say the first thing.